Hi, thanks for joining me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a number of videos just for children. Most of the videos that I do are for adults because most of my therapeutic classes involve adults. However, from time to time we do work with uh, groups that have children in them, especially during the summertime. So I thought that I would add some of these to it. I'm going to use uh, some of these books. This is a Nickelodeon book and of course the character is Spongebob. What it is is watercolor but they've made it really easy or simplified it for children and made it less messy. There's quite a few in here. I'm not sure how many are in here but we'll go through the book. Um, and just kind of make it a do a little explanation of how to paint with these because it's not the same as when you're painting a regular watercolor painting. They have several different ones and I think that's the one I'm going to do because it's a Spongebob book. We're going to start with Spongebob. Okay. Ooh, I love pizza. I think I'll do this one. So this one says Chase Your Dreams. The pages are perforated and there's only one picture per side. It's going to require that we use water and a brush. So I'm going to tear this out of here. Now when we look at these, paint, these uh, papers or pages, we notice they already have uh, color on them and that's going to be your watercolor so all you're going to have to do is add water to this so you're going to use a brush and add water to it and I have two different size brushes they're still very small one is round and one is um it's flat but it's got a little rounded edge so just two small brushes so use whatever brush that you have handy now each of these have patterns on them. I recommend using a small amount of water for each. You can add water as you go. If you add too much water it's going to run and make a mess and you won't be able to control where you're painting. I think it's best that we paint from the inside. When we paint these it's best to paint from the inside outward. And that means we're going to paint what is in here first which is Spongebob's tongue and the inside of his mouth then we'll come out and do some of his body his eyes pants and then we'll go on to the rest of the stuff we can paint these things out here and it may be fine but just in case we put a little too much water on it or just in case we bump it with our hand we'll track paint in places we don't want it and I don't want you to get frustrated so each of these has a different pattern and knowing the color pattern some of this may turn into what we call mud because it's all mixed different colors mixed together and it doesn't make sense when we look at it it looks strange and to avoid that we'll come in and use a small amount of water let me bring my container with water over so you can see it as you see I don't have that much water in my container it's way down there because you don't need a lot of water and we don't want to make a mess by accidentally knocking it over which I do a lot of okay so we're going to begin with his tongue and his tongue has polka dots on it and these polka dots they look like they're yellow and orange so we're going to take the water the brush, we have it swishing around in the water. Come over a little bit more. I want you to see everything I'm doing. And then I'm going to just lay it on the paper towel. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start at the bottom, staying in the line, just touching his tongue with the brush. And I'm going now in a circular motion. Let's see if I can get zoom in a little bit so you can see some of this see it's starting to color it 
Now I'm going to dip back into the water and wipe it on the side. So I'm dipping into the water and wiping it along the side and taking a little more water. So that has a little bit more water in it and it should dissolve this paint on the tongue a little bit better. I don't necessarily want to see these dots remain on there, but I don't want to get that orange out here on the lip either. So I'm trying to keep it in there. Let's see what the back looks like. It's trying to hold up. It's wrinkling the page because these are thin pieces of paper. So if we dissolve these dots all the way down, it's really going to wrinkle that paper. I'm running it in the water again. Now I'm going to do the inside of the mouth. And I see the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. I'm going to start up here in the corner of his mouth. Come all the way down. I'm long little brushing motions. I don't want it to get on the teeth. It's making puddles. That's what watercolor normally does, makes puddles. It's hard to control it. So a way to have some type of control over watercolors is to put a small amount of water in there. When you get around areas that have these little sharp corners, it's best to use a pointed brush. I'm going to dip back in the water and then touch in here again. And we'll see what it does. I thought it was going to get dark, but I take it we don't have enough blue in there. To make that darker. Okay, I'm back in here with the water again. Now he has, I'm going to do, so I need to do the sponge, his body, but there are different colors in this sponge and his eyes also. So I'm going to do his eyes first. And let's color his eyes first. One eye, two eyes, some color really well and some don't, some sections of this. I'm going to rinse my brush off because I don't want the blue to get in the other color and mess it up. So now I'm going to just color inside these circles. See each circle? Just inside the circle. And we don't want a lot of water there because we don't want it to mess with the color on the outside, which is going to be mostly yellow with a couple of little specks here and there. And then I'll come over to this side. See those are little blue. The circles are blue inside his little sponge. There's enough water on this brush that I didn't have to dip back in the water. I'm coloring all of the circles. There we go. And now I'm going to rinse that off. My brush, that is. Now those little circles, I'm looking at them, they're still really wet. So if I go in here and paint that yellow now, it's going to all just bleed over. So I'm going to have to go to another area now I'm going to move down here where his pants are, so his shorts are here, but this little tag I think is his tie, and it's a different color. So I'm going to color that tie, and just the tie, that's all I'm going to color over here, I'm not coloring anything else. You see that? It's not very, um, it doesn't stand out very much. Okay. 
Okay, let's go to another area. While that's drying, we're going to go ahead and paint the other parts of the pants. So I got my brush wet inside my container of water here. I just swish it around and I have the water on it. I can shake it and then come over here and let's paint this area. We have to give the, the uh, paint a chance to dry in the area that we're painting in. If not, it will just run into another area. That's the difference in these and water I mean watercolors and, and pencils. There, I'm going to shake that. Now, I didn't put that line is there and I didn't go over the line, so I'm going to come on this side of that line and color in the leg. There, that'll work. So it didn't bleed over into the other section. So that's the thing you have to watch out for when you do watercolor. You can't have too much water or you'll mess it up. Okay, so let's rinse, rinse the brush and get some more water on it. We'll shake the brush and we'll come over here and do this leg. See this leg? He's got a leg over here, the pant leg. Or should I say short legs? <laughs> He's, he has shorts on. Now we'll do the body because that little tie that we painted a little just a few minutes ago should be dry. Hmm. That's kind of nice. can still see those lines and so now we will see let me lift it up and see if the circles are dry yep so these circles in here on SpongeBob <coughs> excuse me face they are dry I'm gonna switch to my larger brush and I'm going to wet it in my water and shake it one time and then I'm going to come over here the reason why I switched to this larger brush is because it's a lot more area to cover. Now, coloring SpongeBob, I'm noticing there's little green dots all over. There we go, it's coming together. You see that? Rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, shake it. I scrub the brush in there and then I shake it and paint with it. I do his nose, his upper mouth, his upper lip. I expect him to be yellow, but there's spots of uh, little spots of green all throughout here. Yes, it's coming together. Hmm. 
He looks more green than yellow, but we already know he's supposed to be yellow. That green is somewhat overpowering, but that is pretty nice. So you have to let the painting be what the painting is going to be. Now we'll do the arm. see a little something on the knee. I don't know what that is. We'll just add a little water to it. He's got his socks on. Alright, so all of that is done. Oh, we need to do his other hand. So just turn it around like that and I'll do his other arm and hand. Mm-hmm. SpongeBob is painted. Now we're just painting the stuff in his little area. I think I'll continue to use this uh, paintbrush because the other one is quite wide. All right. Oh, we have, what, two more little flowers. Let's get these little flowers done. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to paint inside the lines. And I have a yellow one up there. The two down there, and I got a yellow one up top. Yellow and orange, that's what those polka dots look like. thing that's left is this looks like seaweed rising <laughs> we have the chase your dreams and then we have these two look like pieces of seaweed on the side so we're going to turn it upside down so that I'm painting this way towards me The little brush I'm able to go inside these things now they took the guesswork out of it for you so you can follow along just put the water on there well so this one side is almost done and there we are remember turn the paper so that you're comfortable with making the brush mark. Oh, sorry, I'm not done, am I? Chase your dreams. I put this off till last and then thought we were done. <clears throat> there we are, chase your dreams. That's what SpongeBob says. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy painting.